IEC is heading to the Constitutional Court to ask for the postponement of the municipal elections. A former, a former Deputy Chief Justice, uh, Dikha Mosaneke, my apologies, found elections would not be free and fair amid this coronavirus pandemic. So who gets to say what's going to happen here? Well, let's find out from constitutional law expert uh, Pierre de Foss uh, for his views on this. Professor, good day to you. You and I spoke just a little while ago, uh, but uh, having said that, we're getting quite close to... October, there needs to be plans put in place. Electioneering needs to happen. Uh, surely we're going to get to a point where it's going to be too little, too late uh, to change the Concord's mind? Well, the problem is, is that the closer we get to the election, um, the more difficult it is going to be the, for the Constitutional Court to hold the line, so to speak, and not to give in to the IEC's request basically to suspend the provision in the Constitution. As, we, as it is, because the election has been declared, the voters' roll is closed, and so um, it's already going to be a problem because all the voters who became eligible to vote since the last election, very few of them have been registered, so they will be disenfranchised unless something is done. So uh, it's a bit of a, a, a really bad situation because the IEC waited so long. They chose the court instead of going to Parliament. Um, and now they really, in a way, the effect, whether that was the intention, I don't know, but the effect is they're putting a gun against the head of the judges of the Constitutional Court to help them to postpone the election because clearly they haven't prepared sufficiently to have the election in October. Mm -hmm. There's no other reason, I think, why they are only doing it now. That, that seems to be the, the widely held view, Prof, that because of COVID-19 and various other reasons, uh, simply just didn't plan for this year's elections. Let me ask the layman question, if I could, uh, just perhaps for viewers who are only joining in on the conversation now, we're just catching up on what's going on with the elections. Why does the IEC have to ask for permission to change the election date? If they are the IEC, don't, aren't they the overruling par, uh, body on this? Well, the, the, um, the legislation uh, allows either the IEC or the minister or the president, depending on what election it is, to postpone an election, but only if it is within the, the, elect, the period for which that body was elected. In terms of the constitution, um, you, uh, you, a body like the municipal council is elected for a period only of five years. What they now want to do, they want to extend that period and have an election after the last uh, date permitted by the constitution, that five years plus a 90 days leeway. And so if they don't have the election, they clearly are in breach of the constitution. All the uh, municipal councils stop functioning because they have no legal authority and local government basically collapse. So they have to, if they go not going to have the election in uh, October, they will have to get some kind of legal fig leaf to make sure that the system continues and that their own failure to have the election is not unconstitutional. Uh, Prof, before I say goodbye to you this morning, let's kick the tin a little bit down the road here. I'm going to play devil's advocate and give you a scenario. The elections are going to be postponed from October to February. That's going to be happening now in 2022. What happens, what legal recourse is there for any of the parties who don't want it in February 2022, but they rather want it in October? Because I imagine this is uh, all kind of legal wrangling is yeah. because there's going to be at least one side of this that aren't going to be happy. Well, so the, the problem, of course, if the Constitutional Court um, grants the extension and they find some, by miracle, some legal way of doing this that is relatively credible, then the election has been validly postponed because the Constitutional Court has the final say. Um, if there is then an election in February, then the, nobody would be able to challenge that unless in February the election is not free and fair. Then anybody can come to the court again and they can challenge the validity of the election. And one of the things they can say is that it's too late, but, but the constitutional court has the final say about that particular decision, um, except if you go to par the parliamentary route, of course. Uh, Prof, just before I say goodbye to you, just a, a last brief answer from you, if you could. I'm getting the sense from you that you do have a position on uh, October or February, but let me just ask the obvious question here. Do mm. you think these elections are going to get postponed, Prof? Um, 
I don't really know. I don't want them to be postponed because I think that's unconstitutional. You needed to go to the parliament to, to change the constitution in a specific way. Um, but the constitutional court is in an extremely difficult position because uh, at this point, um, if there is evidence that it's impossible to have the election in October and for it to be more or less free or fair, they might basically be forced to postpone it. So it's difficult to know whether they're going to uh, be, see the facts like that and whether they're then going to give in to the IEC. Well, the Constitutional Court in a difficult position, and I, I couldn't help but put uh, Professor Pieter Foss in one as well, just as my last question. Professor, thank you very much, uh, as always, for indulging me here uh, on ENC about whether it's elections in October or February. It's coming down to the Apex Court, the Concord. It's the one that's going to have to decide in the end.